Um, so the third product we're launching, uh, we're working on it now, um, and we're going to launch next summer, is called Scooter Router, which is effectively the same tech, but delivered on micro-mobility scooters. So again, you'll be able to jump on a, <coughs> on, on, on a line bike or whatever Scooter is, and, and, and do a sightseeing experience, and that effectively replaces the bike tour. So I can imagine, I'm going to start with the, the third one and work my Good. way uh, through them. The scooter project, are we talking about literally you have a lime anyway, or mm. you, is it your brand of bike and... No, I don't want any hardware. So effectively okay. that, that product uh, mod, um, evolves to become getting an Uber and take a Marriott branded experience. Okay. Now you'll be able to get on a scooter and take a Marriott branded experience, although because it's a lower price product, it might be more likely to be a Ryanair product than a Marriott product, but you know, that's kind of how that works. So are we talking about, is this something that a, a, a customer or a punter would take their own iPhone to yes. dock it? Yes. And it is effectively, is it your brand or the, the Mario brand? We. Your brand is Scooter? Or is it no, it's not our Scooter, it's just all these Scooter companies. Okay. Uh, so in that, in that uh, model, we look at ourselves as being YouTube. Okay. So when, you're, when you watch a video on YouTube, you know you're watching it on YouTube, but you also know the <laughs> channel that you're watching, and we are that model. So you know you're using us. But actually, it's not our brand that's important. What's brand? The brand that's important is the travel brand or the uh, DMO brand. So apart from the commercials, it is still very much a software model. So it's a software, yeah, content it's a to the screen for you. Zones. That's the fundamental difference between sightseeing for the last 100 years and sightseeing for the next 100 years, is that we're shifting from being a hardware problem mm -hmm. to a software problem. Mm -hmm. So hardware used to be buses, and now it's, now it's all software. Now it's all creating experiences, mm -hmm. delivering experiences using software. Are you thinking of it, are you positioning this more as a platform or yeah. are you going to be a content business because of what has to happen? Obviously you have to arrange it for the first couple of... Both. Uh, both. Okay. So uh, we've got several deals already lined up, um, which, and some of which are active. We're, we're taking bookings today with real customers, real money. Um, and they are, yeah, they're, we're, um, we're, we're, sort of, we're, we're a travel agent, as okay. a, technically we're a travel agent. We're a technology platform, but we replace the tour operator. So we're kind of a, 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 a whole new breed. Okay, and I think it gets very exciting once you talk. It's a software yeah, problem. Software, right? software. And that means you can expand it to all sorts of mm -hmm. different channels and markets and creators, and there's something quite sexy about that. Yeah. It's nice and tight. You can deliver that quickly and yeah. get the I'm going to finish, by the way, this, of the trio. I'm going to finish on the, uh, I'm going to finish on the, 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 the toughest of them, um, the one where you're building cars. That's mm. kind of cool, right? But yeah. let's talk about the, the Uber style Marriott thing first. It, it, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be one of the, if I could call it off the shelf self driving cars, like the, the ball bolt one with yep. a ton of LiDAR and cameras on it, and you're plugging into that again. It seems like a software play. Is that still. Yeah, it would be, be nice to be incorporated within those vehicles, but okay. we expect that independent app developers will also be able to build apps in, onto phones that people will carry that uh, will communicate with the car. So we don't have to do deals with vehicle platforms, we can do deals with independent app developers. And not to go too technical into it though, but are you, you're not at the CAN bus level of the car at that stage. You're still very much a, a, an app that we lives in a, a car be. environment. It depends what deals we do. Okay. But it could be. It's still very much work in progress though. It's, uh, yeah, there's a couple of open source um, vehicle platforms that are being built, which are quite easy to plug into, and there's a couple of proprietary uh, ones that cool. would require. So serious cash to get into. So smart software guys could go into this space. Yeah. Mark, you're looming. It looks like I'm looming because I, I think I think I don't. Uh, you're right. I mean, so the, so the one I thing people we, want to ask some questions. I'm so the one thing we've got going for us <laughs> is that we're first mover, um, and we've got this platform. It's had, it's had two years' work put into it already. Um, it's so it's it's a first mover scenario. Uh, we think autonomous cars will be here 23, 24, 25. So if anyone wants to catch up by 23, 24, 25, and we've got a two years head start. I think the chances are that people are more likely to partner with us than compete with us. Um, but actually, I don't mind if people ignore us because that gives us more lead time. So I don't mind how, which outcome. It still feels like a moonshot. It is a moonshot, but it's an entrepreneurial moonshot. If you're an incumbent, if you've, got a, if you've got a fleet of buses today, would you make a commitment today to go, well, I think I'm going to start my transition? The answer probably is no. But as an entrepreneur, you go, sure, this looks great. Like, this, is, this is a great thing to be involved with because um, it's, it's got a very big upside, but I've, and I've already covered my downside by creating a whole new <laughs> tours and activities distribution platform. So I've already made sure that I'm not negative. 
We have a Cinderella problem for the evening. Um, the, uh, the coach will turn to a pumpkin if we don't end <laughs> at eight, so I do want to leave a little bit of time for questions. Um, I will ask another question towards the end about uh, bootstrapping, because I have to, but I want to leave a couple of spaces for some Q&A in the audience. Okay, so I saw Janice's hand go up there. I want to answer the yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get to the wall. Yeah. I know it's got Janice. Thanks, Mark. Um, I couldn't come here and uh, witness the really interesting story of an expert in this area without um, asking a question. In your experience, what do you think are the challenges for accessibility in various travel experiences? Would you have any suggestions on the kinds of gaps that could be filled by? Yeah, so autonom well, let's talk about autonomous vehicles for a second. They're going to be a massive benefit to uh, for accessibility. Um, they, if you look, I've, when I go to autonomous vehicle conferences there in the UK, there's always the organisations that represent uh, uh, blind um, uh, sort of aspects of living, and they all come along and tell the engineers what they need to be incorporating in the cars. Um, it's if you look at how autonomous vehicles are being used in the USA in uh, retirement villages, you'll see people in their 80s and 90s using autonomous vehicles today as tests because those vehicles move slowly around these big retirement villages and the data shows that people are getting out of their houses more and going to, going to their community hubs more. So autonomous vehicles are going to be really a fantastic opportunity to get people uh, more mobile and I think it's already been acknowledged that that's the case so that's going to be really good. Have you, have you had any sort of autonomous hacks or I don't think that there's has been, There's been a few people like who engaged last year who were in that space and we were talking about how to, for example, smart are one of our sponsors. So how do we incorporate accessibility and inclusion into that smart tech and um, more efficient use of more environmentally sustainable um, methods of getting around autonomous vehicles, I think it falls into that category. Yep. But it would be interesting just thinking, um, in your experience, does accessibility ever feature in terms of the travel experience? I mean, autonomous vehicles do one thing, but you just mentioned a, a range of experiences, like, okay, there's a scooter, obviously yeah. that would be challenging. Well, do you think there's opportunities to really extend the array of experiences that we provide to, um, to target people with disabilities are beyond that spectrum of average? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, scooters, you work, scooter tends to have a minimum age of 18, and you tend to find people over 60 don't, uh, don't want to go on a scooter. Mm -hmm. so, so they are quite um, narrow-banded in terms of uh, to, to demographic, um, but the, the autonomous vehicle should be much wider than that. Um, I also think that people, at the moment, the taxis have to be designed pretty standardised. I mean, London taxis, the big argument a few years ago was London taxis are designed for wheelchair use, but no Uber is. So if you had, a, if, if you had wheelchair and you wanted to get in an Uber, you'd have a big problem. Whereas the London taxis cost more because some of that cost goes towards supporting people who, uh, you know, otherwise wouldn't be able to use a vehicle. So, yeah, so there's all, you know, there's, there's, I mean, the good news is that those arguments are being presented to the autonomous vehicle companies today, and they're being heavily incorporated within the designs that are being built. All right, uh, I think we've got a bit of a backlog on questions, so I'll come to you next, Greg. You didn't have a question, <laughs> <laughs> Susan. <laughs> would be a good one, though. <laughs> <laughs> Same question you asked the last time. Over tourism. Can we talk about over tourism? Well, ask, for, ask for over tourism. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep you get to introduce way. yourself. I'm, 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 I suppose I'm very keen on, on understanding more what the whole area of, 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 of tourism is doing about over tourism yep. and about sustainability, I suppose. There's a huge problem, and in some ways, it's about experience, and that experience is being um, so, uh, touched on or, or being diminished. So I'll give you two answers. So this summer was the first summer where we've seen a really big problem for the bus tour companies. So in six cities this summer, buses are now banned. That includes Rome, Paris, and I'll give you a whole list, Oslo, um, Reykjavik, I can't remember the list now, but it's all back of my head somewhere. Um, so basically, this summer, all of the mayors of these large cities have all now started banning tour buses from their city centre. And that trend is going to continue. So I think within 18 months, tour buses are going to be gone anyway. Unless they're green, so that is a fun, that's something that's fundamental. Um, but the second thing is slightly more interesting about how we can use uh, buses, <coughs> autonomous vehicles, to address over tourism. And one of the things we can do is uh, because we know people's intent. So if we know that this vehicle is going to go here to here to here, 
and we know this vehicle is going to go here to here to here, we can see that at a certain point, at a certain, at a certain time of day, it's going to be more busy, and we can then uh, send uh, notifications to those individual cars and say, hey, we know you're going to the uh, park this afternoon at 3.30, would you like to go tomorrow morning instead? We think it would be a better experience because it would be less crowded. So we can start giving DMOs tools to control the traffic within their cities and to start influencing people to disperse in lifetime around cities. Now that does require a certain proportion of the global traffic in the city to be on our platform, I get that, but it is at least theoretically possible for that uh, as an outcome. So we might be able to do a lot of dispersal through knowing intent. And we're tracking vehicles, we're not tracking people. That's quite an important privacy and interesting point. There are vehicles, so we're allowed to track our vehicles. I know there are some <laughs> questions here. Yeah, so. Hi, I'm Alice Lamb from I'm just, you addressed some of the cities here that you're looking at opportunity in, but um, do you know which cities you'd like to open in with either car or scooter first? And did you encounter any like, legal obstacles? Like in Ireland, the scooters are a bit of an issue and we don't enforce them. Yeah, the two countries in the, U in the EU, or maybe it's one in the EU and one half in the EU, uh, that's the UK and Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Phrase. How did I phrase that? Let me think about that. Um, <laughs> um, uh, they're the two countries that still have scooters banned. I mean, the UK government's looking at it. I don't know what the Irish government's doing, but the UK government's looking at it now, but they've had their attention on other things recently. Um, <laughs> so I, I would hope the scooters become it. I mean, the, the, the cities, and, we're, and I, I tend to do tourist board projects because the tourist boards love scooters because it enables the tourist boards to create transactional products. Whereas previously they would have had to have done a deal with a local tour operator, and now all of their walking itineraries can suddenly become transactional. Uh, so the DMOs are loving it. So yes, there's quite a few out there. So maybe. I'm happy to anyway. We wouldn't be global, so you know we'll do you know we'll do that. Thank you. Uh, here's my name. I have a electric bike tour business. Um, uh, the scale of projects here is brilliant and I'm a big fan of electric stuff, but you're taking the dream now in the village. Yep. And what are you going to do to replace that? Because people travel to meet people, yep. not just to see stuff. No, you're 100% right. Um, so, so the first thing is you need to look at the, sort of the history of innovation within the humans, within sightseeing. So firstly we started off with tour guide led, that is pretty obvious, and that's still the predominant way of doing tours today. Great. Uh, and then we went to self-guided, which included um, sort of audio tours and all that kind of thing. Frankly, they're all a bit dull and they're all a bit of a nonsense. I mean, some of them are brilliant, but some of them are just like, uh, you know, because, they're, they're, because they don't have the human in, right? Just like you described, you're like, where's that human gone? Um, so, so, so what we're doing is we're evolving beyond that. We're, what I, would, I haven't quite got the wording right yet, but we're going to kind of call it AI-guided. So one of the things that you know, we're looking at, we've got a, I've got a long list of 15 things that I think a tour guide does during the delivery of a tour. And an audio tour only covers off a couple of them, so that's the reason why they're all a bit stale. Um, but AI guided enables us to bring, we're going to try and look at the whole list of 15 um, as to, and I can, I'm going to publish this at some point in the next couple of weeks. Um, but, but, but the other, but the other, yeah I've got it, I can say, I can give it to you because I, I, I and I've sent it around to review for a few people, so it is kind of half out there now. Um, the, um, but the, the other thing is that we're converting tour guides to place hosts. So you know when you go to Disney, I don't know if you go to Disney often, but if you go to Disney, the actors stay in the same place, and the tours go to the actor. The actor does a five minute spiel, and then the, the tour goes off, and the actor stays in, in space. Um, what we can do is we can have, instead of having tour guides, we have place hosts. So you, you, you bring the autonomous vehicle, you bring the um, scooter up to a point, that tour guide will deliver a 10 minute uh, uh, oratory of that location, and then you'll get back on the scooter and continue to the next actor or tour guide. And we're gonna call those people place hosts rather than tour guides. So we are involving humans, we're just not calling them tour guides. So we still want to employ tour guides, we're just gonna get them to do something slightly different. So instead of just being a driver, they can add to Yeah, so we're, the, the drivers we're losing. We're losing the drivers, but we're keeping the full place. Alright, so uh, all of these team have to ask questions. Hi, I'm an NSL. In regards to the vehicles, you know, you can fit quite a lot of people in one 
on one bus. Yes. So by adding more vehicles to an already congested city, yes. it's quite difficult, you know, to boot up the traffic. So by having the autonomous vehicles, I don't really understand. I understand the scooters, yeah. I think that's fantastic. But taking away the aspect of a tour guide and coming in, in a vehicle where you can introduce yourself to people. So besides on a tour bus, you can have interaction, you can make a friend, you can go for drinks at dinners. Yeah. You know, you have a bigger market. Uh, by reducing that and putting people into a two-seater, three-seater, four, five, red vehicle, so, I don't see how that's really going to work. And no, I don't see how it's going to um, it, How it's going to work is a really interesting question. It may not work. But it's a good entrepreneurial punt for the next few years, that's how I look at it. Um, so it could not work, we're just going to try, okay? That's, it's a technology problem, we're going to solve it. Um, but fundamentally, right, if you have more, it, the way the analysis has gone, which is not our analysis, if you have lots of autonomous vehicles in a city, the congestion goes down. The issue is when you have half autonomous vehicles and half uh, human-driven vehicles, because the humans are trying to avoid the autonomous ones, the autonomous ones are trying to avoid the human ones, and you have big issues at that point. So there is going to be a trans, there's going to be a trans transfer, but we're not actually looking to put our autonomous vehicles on those routes. The advantage of tourism over robo taxis is that we can create fixed sightseeing routes that take advantage of all sorts of things, and we can do weird things like go through parks and things like that. So, um, so it is a, it's a different kind of setup. We're not trying to take the hop-on, hop-off bus product and go, right, let's put that into an autonomous vehicle. It's actually a completely different product. It just happens to be the, uh, a replacement, what I would call mainstream product. Because people are always going to go in with personal tour guides. They're always going to do long tail stuff. But this is, this is a replacement for the mainstream product. The mainstream product that is hop-on, hop-off today will be this tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to throw Sometime. In, I'm going to throw in one last question here, Mark. Um, I'll get into trouble if I don't ask it. Um, Alex, apart from you know uh, funding a company with a yacht, mm. which I still think is kind of a cool story, but um, it's terrible. I try not to use that story. You yeah, exited, yeah. You exited <laughs> a company with 97% shareholders. Mm -hmm. um, you've probably formed a couple of opinions around VC at yeah. this stage and how you've built uh, tour CMS to 250 million in yeah. transactions. Yeah. How has that influenced what you're doing today? How are you going to fund it? What's um, your journey? With I've it? still got uh, pretty much the same equity this time around. Right? Uh, so again, sole founder, sole technology founder, write all the code, uh, do all the commercials, um, do everything. Um, that's just the way it is. Um, I, Are you going to go for the big giant investment I, round I, the Silicon Valley? We style? might take a round because okay. I've suddenly found out, well not suddenly, I've realised actually building vehicles turns out to be quite expensive. <laughs> and you are looking at building a <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to have a vehicle at ITB in March in 2020 wow. and I've already got a builder lined up and I'm sitting there thinking, uh, and my wife says, not allowed to spend any more of my money. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> she said, Can you, can't you find somebody else to put some money into this? I'm like, oh, I suppose. So, yeah. So, so <laughs> is, it, is it possible, and should we take it as, a, as an example, to build without VC? I think you can build some companies without VC, and some you can't. Um, the problem with it is that everyone, I mean, VC is like, you know, if you want to be a hundred times company. But see, I'm, I think this, with, this is a franchise model, effectively. If you can get the franchise model with this technology platform set in the middle, if you can get one or two franchisees, you're, you're, you're trading. I mean, with, with Tor CMS, we never made it any money, but we never made a loss. So we just kept on going, just, you know, just keeping the staff at exactly the same level as our income. And that was what we did for years. Uh, and the same situation now, just got to get the money coming in and then balance it. It, it helps to be a technical founder of a company. Mm. No, I, it doesn't help. I think it's mandatory. I, have, I know so many friends who are doing startups, and I don't know a single one who succeeded who's not a technical founder. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. So you can't no, just outsource it or hope no, that no, you no. can... I, I, think, I, think, I think if you... It's like being in the band. You should, if you're going to be in a musical band, you should be musical. You can be in the music industry and not be musical. But if you're going to be in the band, you can be musical. Right, you can be in the startup industry and not be technical, but you can't be the startup founder because you need you're going to have to spend years and years and years, double the length, double the length of time you think it's going to take, and you're going to run out of money before you get any traction. So you need to go to write code because you're going to be the only person building the product. I've never wrote a song. 
the other way of looking at it is that Airbnb is a classic. I mean, the only there is only one example in recent history of companies that have done well without a technology founder, and that is Snapchat.